Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Kingdom Faith Outdoors channel. My name is Miguel Fuentes, and as you can see, I'm in the living room uh, for for a short while until my room is uh, getting uh, renovated and all. And so, praise God. So today we'll get into Second Ezra chapter eleven and twelve today. And uh, before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just uh, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Father, we just ask that you would give us faith and in, uh, in believing in your word. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Second Ezra chapter 11 says, On the second night I had a dream, and behold, there came up from the sea of an eagle that had uh, twelve feather wings and three heads. And I looked, and, and behold, he spread his wings over all the earth, and all the winds of heaven blew upon him, and the clouds were gathered about him. And I, and I looked, and out of his wings there grew opposite wings, but but they became little prairie wings, but his heads were at rest. And the middle head was larger than the other heads, but it also was at rest with them. And I looked, and behold, the eagle flew with his wings to reign over the earth and over those who dwell in it. And I saw how all things under heaven were subject to him. And no one spoke against him, not even one creature that was on the earth. And I looked, and behold, the eagle rose upon its talons. And uttered a cry to his wings, saying, "Do not, do not all watch at the same time. Let each sleep in his own place and watch in his turn. But let the heads be reserved for the last." And I looked, and behold, the voice did not come from his heads. But from the midst of his body, and I counted his opposite wings, and behold, they were eight of them. And I looked, and behold, on the right side one wing rose, and it rained over the all the earth. And while it was raining, it came to its end and disappeared so that its place was not seen. Then the next wing arose and rained, and it count continued to rain a long time. And while it was raining, its end came also, so that it disappeared like the first. Behold, a voice sound saying to it, Hear me, you who have rained, who have ruled the earth all this time, I announce this to you before you disappear. After you, no one shall rule as long as you, or even half as long. Then the third wing rose itself up and held the rule like the former ones, and it also disappeared. And so it went with all the wings they withered power one after another and then were never seen again and I looked and behold in due course the wings that follow or rose up on the right side and in order to rule there were some of them that ruled yet disappeared suddenly and others of them rose up, but did not hold the rule. And after this, I looked, and behold, the twelve wings and the two little wings disappeared. 
and nothing remains on the eagle's body except the three heads um except uh the three heads that were at rest and six little wings and 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 I looked and behold two little wings separated from the six and remain under the head that was on the right that on the uh, right side but four remain in their place and I looked and behold um hold on get one second there Okay. And I looked, and behold, these little wings plant, uh, planted to set themselves up and hold the wool. And I looked, and behold, one was set up, but suddenly disappeared, a second also, and this disappeared more quickly than the first. And I looked, and behold, the the two that remained were plan uh, planning between themselves to war together, and while they were planning, behold, one of the heads that were at rest, the one which was in the middle, awoke, and for it was greater than the other two heads. And I saw how it aligned the two heads with itself, and behold, the heads turned with those that were with it. And it devoured the two little wings uh, which were planning to reign. Moreover, this had this had gained control of the whole world, sorry, the whole earth, and with much opposition uh, dem uh, demolition it inhabits and it had greater power over the world than all the wings that had gone before. And after this I looked, and behold, the middle head also suddenly disappeared, just as the wings had, had done. But the two heads remained which also ruled over the earth and its inhabitants. And I looked, and behold, the head of the right side devoured the one on the left. Hmm. Then I heard a voice saying to me, Look be, be before you uh, and consider what you see. And I looked, and behold, a creature like a lion was aroused out of the forest roaring and I heard how he uttered a man's voice to the eagle and spoke saying listen I will speak to you the most high says to you are you not the one that remains of the four beasts which I had made to reign in my world so that the end of my time may come through them you the fourth that has come, had uh, conquered all the beasts that have gone before, and you have held uh, sway over the world with much trouble, sorry, much terror, and, o and over the, all the earth with grievous opposition to oppression, and for so long you have dwell, uh, dwell on the earth with deceit, and you have judged the world, sorry, the earth, but not with truth. For well, you have afflicted the meek and injured the peaceable. You have hated those who tell the truth and have loved liars. 
You have destroyed the dwellings of those who brought forth fruit and have laid low the walls of those who did you no harm. And so your in insolence has come up before the Most High, and your pride to the most sorry to the mighty one, and the Most High has looked upon this time, and behold, they are ended, and his age are complete. Therefore, you will certainly disappear, you eagle. Your terrifying wings, and you must, your most evil little wings, and you, and your mad heads, and your most evil talents, and your whole worthless body, so that the whole earth, freed from your violence, may be refreshed and revealed, sorry, and relieved, and may hope for the judgment and mercy of Him. Who made it? Very, very interesting. Chapter 12 Oh, now we get to issue really quick. Chapter 12 While the lion was saying these words to the eagle, I looked, and behold, the remaining head disappeared, and the two wings that had gone away to it arose, and set themselves up to reign, and their reign was brief and full of turmoil. And I looked, and behold, they also disappeared. And the whole body of the eagle was burned, and the earth was exceedingly terrified. Then I awoke in great perplexity of mind and great fear, and I say to my spirit, Behold, you have brought this upon me, because you search out of the ways of the Most High. Behold, I am still weary in mind and very weak in my spirit. And not even a little strength is left in me because of the great fear with which I have been ter uh, terrified this night. Uh, therefore, I will now beseech the Most High that He may strengthen me to the end. And I say, O oh, Sovereign Lord, if I have found favor in, in Thy sight, and if I have been accounted righteous before thee beyond many others and if my prayers has indeed come up before the uh, sorry before before thy face strengthen me and show me thy servant the interpretation and meaning of this terrifying vision that thou mayest fully comfort my my soul for thou hast judged me Worthy to be shown the end of the times and the last events of the times. He said to me, This is the interpretation of this vision which you have seen. The eagle which you saw coming up from the sea is the fourth kingdom which 
appeared in a vision to your brother Daniel, but it was not explained to him, as I now explain or have explained it to you. Behold, the days are coming when a kingdom shall rise on earth. And it shall be more terrifying than all the kingdoms that have been before it. And the twelve kings shall reign in it at one after the other. But the second that is to reign shall hold sway for a long, longer time than any other of the twelve. This is the interpretation of the twelve wings which you saw. As for you, you are hearing a voice that spoke coming, coming not from the eagle's heads, but from the midst of his body. This is the interpretation. In the midst of the time of the of that kingdom, great struggle shall arise, and it shall be in danger of falling. Nevertheless, it shall not fall then, but shall regain its former power. As for your seeing eight little wings clinging to its wings, this is the interpretation. A king shall arise in it, whose time shall be short. Or uh, in their years swift, and two of them shall perish when the middle of its time draws near, and four shall be kept for the time when its end approaches, but two shall be kept upon the end. As for your seeing three heads at rest. This is the interpretation. In its last days, the Most High will rise up three, king, three kings, and they shall renew many things in it, and shall reign the earth and its inhabitants more oppressively than all who were before them. Therefore, they are called the heads of the eagles, for it is they who shall sum up his wickedness. And perform his last acts. So action. For uh, as for your seeing that the large head disappeared, one of the kings shall die in its in his bed, but in anguish or agonies. But as for the two who remain, the sword shall devour them. For the sword of one shall devour him who was with him. But he also shall fall by the sword in the last days. As for your seeing two little wings passing over to the heads, which was on the right side, this is the interpretation. It is these whom the Most High have kept for the eagle's end. This was the reign which was uh, brief and full of turbulence, as you have seen. As for the lion, who's, who you saw rising up out of the forest, roaring and speaking to the eagle, and provoking him for his unrighteousness, as he, for all his words that you have heard, this is the Messiah, in capital M, who the Most High has kept until the end of days. I think, you know, let me stop there for a quick minute. I think I think this lion was talking about Jesus Christ. If we know that the, we know that Jesus Christ is the lion of Judah, which is pretty interesting. Let's continue. Who will arise from the prophecies of David and will come and speak to them? He will denounce them for their ungodliness and for their wickedness and will cast up before them their contemptuous dealings. For the first, he will set them living before his judgment seat. And he was 
reprove him, then he will destroy them. But he will deliver in mercy the remnant of my people, those who have been saved throughout my borders. And he will make them joyful until the until the end comes. In the day of judgment, of which I spoke to you at the beginning. This is the dream that you saw, and this is its interpretation. And you alone were worthy to learn this secret of the Most High. Therefore, write all these thing, these things that you have seen in a book, and put it in a hidden place. And you shall teach them to to the wise among your people, whether uh, whose hearts you know are about so are able to comprehend and keep these secrets. But wait here seven days more, so that you may be shown whatever it pleases the Most High to show you. Then he left me. Interesting. Almost done. When all the people heard that the seven days were past and I had not returned to the city, they all gathered together from the least to the greatest and came to me and spoke to me, saying, How have we offended you, and what harm have we done you, that you have forsaken us and sit in this place? For of all the prophets you alone are left to us. Like a cleanser of grapes from the vin from the vin uh, vintage, and like a lamp in a dark place, and like a heaven for a ship saved from the storm. Are not the evils which have befallen us uh, sufficient? Therefore, if you forsake us, how much better it would be uh, would have been for us if we also had been consumed in the burning of Zion, for we are no better than those who died there. And they wept with a loud voice. Then I answered them and said, "Take courage, O Israel, and do not be sorrow, O house of Jacob." For the Most High has has you in remembrance, in the most sorry, in the mighty one has not forgotten you in your struggles. As for me, I have neither forsaken you nor with, withdrawn from you, but I have come to this place to pray on account of the desolation of of Zion. And to seek mercy on the account of the humiliation of our sanctuary. Now go, every one of you, to his house, and after these days I will come to you. So the people went into the city as I told them to do. But I saw, sorry, but I sat in the field seven days, as the angel has commanded me, and I ate only the flowers of the field. And my food was of plants during those days. All right. What do we have here? Uh, we see in chapter 11, we see the vision of the eagle and the lion arose from the forest. And then in chapter 12, we see the interpretation of the vision. And we see that uh, in verse, what was it? In verse, uh, verse thirty-two, that you know it talks about how how Jesus is the lion. Uh, the Messiah as the lion, and this is very very interesting uh, saying and very very interesting uh, to note. And um, 
And then we see the people came to Ezra, you know, what's going on and all that. And so it's it's been beautiful. So uh, we are super close from getting this done. Again, this is like 16 chapters of these. And so to, uh, next week we'll get into chapters 13 and 14. And then the week after that, 15 and 16. And then that's the end of that series um, for the most part. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, or this Bible study better. May God bless you. May God keep you. See you guys again next time. Bye.